Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. And welcome back to another Topical Tuesday video where we like to start conversations with you guys. And welcome back to another installment in our series mm. where we're talking about building a bourbon collection for X amount of dollars. Today it's $300. This is a super fun thought exercise, as I like to call them, yep. that we are borrowing from the watch world where we like to talk about what watches we would buy for X amount of dollars. So we're doing the same thing here in Bourbon and a hundred and two hundred dollars have been very interesting. You can find those videos in the description below if you want to get caught up, if you didn't catch them the first time around. With that said, let's get right into our three hundred dollar collection. Let's do it. And we've got three hundred dollars to spend. Here are the rules. Three hundred dollars with tax. You got to be able to get out the door with these bottles. If you have sales tax, then you have to factor that in. Right. And this is the start of your bourbon collection. And ideally, you would be happy if you only could have these bottles. So let's start with our first bottle right up. You guys know it's Rare Breed. We got to get this one out of the way right off the top. It's going to be in every one of these videos. Old Faithful. Spoiler so, alert. Yeah. So let's just get it out of the way. Yeah. So in our market, we're going to get this for about $55 with tax. Little more, little less. Let's just go ahead and call it 60 and make it a nice round number. Okay. So this is gonna stay here because it's our favorite. Mm -hmm. You say it's like leather bound books and men in cardigans, and smoking pipes and sophistication. For me, this is just decadent, spicy, dark, just great flavor profile, mm -hmm. little bit of funk to it. It's got a little bit of character, so it's not completely boring. It's not one note, yeah. But it also, at 116 proof doesn't drink its proof point, but it delivers big on the flavor. Yep. So we're big fans of this product and can't say enough about it. We probably have more bottles of this in the house than we do of any other product on the market. So that's our first bottle up. Second bottle is going to be Old Forester 1910. And Old Forester 1910 is a product that I really like, yeah. and then we had it in a blind tasting and you kind of fell in love with it. Yeah. You said it was like a breakfast in a bottle. It was pancakes and syrup. Yeah. And there was like a little bit of a savory element that you called bacon. It's a really good product. Hey, bacon the, and pancakes. Who doesn't want that? Yeah. It's well, a unless you're a vegetarian. Well, that's fair. You can eat, uh, well, <laughs> you eat turkey bacon. You can eat turkey bacon if you're a vegetarian. No. Do they have any kind of bacon substitute? Tofu bacon. How's that? I've never had it. Okay. Let's well, go on. Let's keep Continue. it. Let's keep it that way. Nonetheless, Old Forester 1910 is a favorite of ours from mm -hmm. the Whiskey Row series. You also like the 1870 a whole lot, the 90 yeah. proofer. Yeah. Because it's kind of tempered sweetness and yeah. everything. This has big sweetness, but it has a lot of dark flavors. It has flavors. other things too. It's not just sweetness. Right. It's, it's got more stuff going on. Yeah. And in our market, this is a $50, $55 bottle. We're okay. getting out the door about 60 with this. So between these two, we're sitting at $120. Okay. Watch me end up miscalculating this and us going over our own budget. Uh oh. That's not surprising if I'm running the budget. If he's That's why she the runs show, the budget. He goes over budget. <laughs> yeah. So this product is great. It gives us a low proof easy sipper that also has a lot of flavor. It's good to sip on its own. It's probably good with ice too, I would assume. Uh, I've it, never tried it that it way, but I would bet it. might hold up to ice because it has flavor. It has a lot of flavor, mm -hmm. yeah. Next up, we're gonna go with some Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof mm. because sometimes you want a nice kick in the teeth. <laughs> you want a good punch in the face. <laughs> right. And Rare Breed, while it's great and it is barrel proof, it does not deliver that impact like something like this does. And this bottle is one of the lower bottles we've seen coming in at 125.9 proof. But we have a 131 over there. Oh, wow. And this stuff delivers. It's really good for us. We get that kind of banana desserty note mm -hmm. to it or at least I do, but then especially if we put it over ice, it becomes very vanilla heavy yeah. and just like, oh, creamy. it's so good. It's creamy almost. Yeah, it gets really creamy, it's really nice. And these in our market are about 65 bucks, so we're getting out the door about $70 with this one right here. So if my math serves me right, we're sitting at 190. We still got $110 to go for our $300 budget. Next bottle up for us is going to be Woodford Reserve Double Oak. And it is an empty bottle. She empty. We have enjoyed that one. We have, and we also use this for something, which is a little bit of a, a Easter egg, a little secret in yeah. this. And keen viewers of the channel will already know where we're You'll going with this. this. 
but this bottle right here in our market is a $50 bottle. So with tax, we're sitting at about 55. That brings our total up to 245, if my math is correct. Mm -hmm. But this bottle is dessert in a bottle. Mm -hmm. It is- But not super sweet. I don't know. There's something for me about the double, double oaked products just sit well with me. Well done double oaked products. Well done double oaked products yeah. sit well with me. And I, I, it's not so sweet that it's off putting from me as someone who doesn't like things super sweet. Right. And so this one right here is, it's great. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, dessert, it's creme brulee, it's all the dark elements that you would want along with all the classic bourbon flavors. It's 90 proof, so it's our lowest proof point here on the table. 90.4 or whatever weird proof point Woodford does. Yeah, 90.4. Uh, this is a pick from a group here, and we'd like to buy these in group picks or store picks if we can get them. Yeah. We don't typically buy the regular version, but it's not really altogether too different because Woodford batches their store picks anyways, and you're getting to select from those. You're not getting just a specific single barrel. Gotcha. You're getting the, yeah. the batch from the toasted barrel or the double oaked barrel in this case. So it's a really good product. A lot of people even prefer this over 1910, even though we prefer 1910 over this if we had to pick one of the mm -hmm. two. But the reason that this is in this list for us and not 1910 by itself is because you can take these three bottles here, forget Rare Breed for now, Just for which now. is almost something I never say, <laughs> but take these three bottles and combine them equal parts one to one and you will get what we call our banana pancakes blend, which is in that decanter right over Aaron's shoulder back yep. there. So we're at one, two, three, four bottles, but you almost have a fifth bottle back there. Because you combine these three right. and it makes this really flavorful, about a hundred proof pour, depending on yeah, how- Yeah, hundred to hundred and four. Depending on how proofy your Jack Daniels yeah. is, it's about a hundred proof, flavorful, awesome pour. Yeah, it's banana pancakes, it's syrupy, it's sweet, yep. the nose is off the charts, it's so good. The finish is amazing. If you if the batch comes out right with a single barrel or if you're using picks here, you we've had batches of this stuff that hit us like something truly special. Mm -hmm. and we've had others that are just flat out super enjoyable. So we can't say enough about this. We like to mix them up equal parts and then we like to let it sit for a month or two or three and then get into it mm -hmm. and start enjoying it. So we keep some in the decanter and we keep some more on the sideline to replenish the decanter <laughs> as it runs dry. But these three bottles will yield you a whole fourth pour. So we're cheating the system a little bit. That's okay. But you gotta get crafty when you're on a budget, you it know? It is, you do. And we're sitting around with about $55 left. What? That's so right? much dollars. Is that right? 60 plus 70, 130 plus 60 okay. is 190 plus 60, 55, 150, 250 ish, 250, two, two, 250, 250. So we got about 50 bucks to work with, with tax. Okay. What we don't have covered here is a easy sipper. Mm, yeah. These are um, all pretty powerful. Right. Strong flavors. Strong flavors. They're not all powerful proof right. points, but they have strong flavor the, profiles. Yeah. These are lower, but they do have a very strong flavor profile. And sometimes you just want something that's a little bit more easy going. Especially and, if this is all your collection. Yeah. You need a little like easy sipper. Yeah. You want like a background whiskey as mm -hmm. we would call it. Something you can just turn a show on or a game on and throw it in your glass and just enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. So low proof, good flavor still that you can enjoy it by itself, but we can't break the bank here either. We need to get out the door under 50 bucks with tax. So we're going to actually save a little bit of money mm -hmm. here and we're going to pull out Green River Bourbon, okay. 90 proof. $30 with tax, we're looking at 33. We got enough money to get some scratch offs or a Coca-Cola to mix some of this stuff with if you want to, or whatever you want to spend your money on. Scratch whatever. offs? I've never heard you, seen you buy a scratch off I, ticket. I, I don't, but oh. some people love them. Okay. You know, it's, I'm first off, I'm not scratching anything off. Secondly, I'm just not wasting my money, but yeah. some people absolutely love them. I would be inclined to buy the Coca-Cola though, because I bet this would go very mm, well in it. A little Jack and Coke action. Oh yeah. Let's just go to the barrel proof and really kick the night off with a bang. But this Green River bourbon is really good. Mm -hmm. It's actually come out very high for me in some blind flights that we've done, yep. but it's got some character. It's got like this little bit of a traditional bourbon profile, but there's like a little bit of like butterscotch brightness to go with the traditional bourbon profile. That's just enough to make it interesting mm -hmm. and not boring, not boring yeah. for 30 bucks. And are there other things we could have 
put in here that would fall under the $50 mark? Sure. Yeah. Something like four rows of single barrel would be an obvious choice for this. Or even if we could find some deals here and save some money, maybe squeezing in like a 10 cup tenure, like we talked about in our $200 video. Mm. But what we needed was something that was low proof, easy sipping that we could just enjoy. And we didn't feel bad about kind of wasting it or blowing through it or mixing it with things. Yeah. And these, other than mixing these three together, we don't really like to mix these with other things. Other than this with the Coca-Cola. Right. Yeah. This right here though, you can just, you know, have at it, yeah. go hog wild. You can't <laughs> go wrong with some Green River bourbon. So those are our choices for spending $300 to build a bourbon collection. We wanna hear what your choices are for $300. Yeah. What I think we learned doing this is that we have a lot more leeway when we have $300 as yes. opposed to one or 200. I feel so, like this is a, com this for me is my complete collection. Yeah. I would be fine with these pours that we just described until the rest of forever. Yeah. For so me. we're super interested to hear what you have yeah. for $300. So make sure to leave that in the comments below. That's it for our main topic. Let's get into some other stuff today. So this one's going to seem super obvious, but it's going to be rest. Mm. And this is necessary. You need rest to be your best. <laughs> rest as to be your somebody best. said, yeah, that just, I might've made that up. I don't know, but nonetheless, you need rest. We've been in a season of busy building the studio, getting other stuff done around the house, mm -hmm. working on this channel, working our regular jobs. And truth be told, we've been stretched very, very thin. So We're, we have learned the value of what some good rest can do, some yeah. quality rest. And you're actually seeing this after our charity fundraiser, which is in and of itself a very labor intensive project for us to put on. But it's been a crazy season of busyness. I've pretty much worked myself into sickness. And the point here is that you got to take a minute for yourself. Take you got to learn time. to say no to some things so that you can relax. And you've been on me about this for a while. Yeah, I have been. Because I'm, I'm the one to just push through a wall. And I want to say, I, my idea of rest is sitting down at the end of the night with a pour or two and thinking that that's enough rest for me. Yeah. And that is just not the case. I've run myself into the ground doing it, it. I feel like that might be relaxing, but that's not true rest. It's not restorative. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. winding down at the end of the night, but it's not restoring yeah. you from what yeah. you need. And I've heard this is kind of off topic, off, on topic, but off topic. I've heard a saying that like creativity thrives in boredom. And I don't necessarily mean being bored, but you need to like if you are a creative person at all, when you're stressed out and you're going, you know, pushing hard, you can't be creative. And like for us with this channel, like we need to have some margin so we can be creative and do things like that, which is yeah. cool. But if, even if you don't have a channel and you're not a creative person, it doesn't really matter. You still need rest. Yeah. And to me, I think one of the things is that our society tends to wear busyness as a badge of honor. Well, there is a lot of hustle culture yeah. toxicity. And I read this book recently called um, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. And I have tasked you to read or listen to that book. It's mm -hmm. a good book. Um, you have. And basically the overview is like the author of the book found that he was just hustling, 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 and it was affecting his family life, his mm -hmm. spiritual life, his social life, all of these things negatively. And he just really ruthlessly decided to cut out hustle and hurry from his life. And he talks about the process he took and what that has done for him. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a really good book. I would recommend it. It um, It's a good read. Even it talk, does talk about some spiritual things. If you're into spirituality, it might be for you. Even if you're not, um, it's still a good book on like just focusing back on what's important to you mm -hmm. and cutting out all the other noise. Yep. Um, so yeah, I actually might reread it just to kind of get that to seep into my brain. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to listen to it too. And you got some homework, take a Sabbath, pick a day, take it easy, do nothing, restore yourself. We all need it from time to time, yeah. especially in this busy world that we live in. Something that doesn't take much time to do is to give this video a thumbs up. That's so easy. It takes a second. If you like this it. video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed and you'd like to keep seeing our content, then feel free to subscribe. And while you're there, you can hit the bell notification to be notified when we post our videos. And also we do monthly live streams, which you'll want to be notified because sometimes they're random throughout the month. That's it for this one. Be good to each other. And until next time, cheers. cheers.